Let, let's talk about that. Let's talk about um, maybe potentially some more of the fun part of, of this and this stadium and these renders that uh, are released. Talk about this and kind of the grand vision that goes into the next stages, the next step, uh, steps rather, of this football program. Because when you look at it, just the actual image and setup of what you guys have planned down the pipeline, this is going to be arguably one of the, if not the best and kind of premier stadium uh, in college football at this level across the country. Yeah, and that's, uh, you know, I think that's the goal. You know, obviously I had nothing to do with uh, the – the building of it, I don't think anybody <laughs> in, the, in the football you know department did. But Maybe we need to change that. Maybe we need you guys out there in the hard hats that could, you know. The, you know. They whipped out the video of it uh, in a full <laughs> athletic staff meeting, and we were, I think everybody's jaw dropped and said, oh, my God. So it's, you know, what, whoever did it, whoever uh, put it together, did a phenomenal job. Yep. Um, just excited to see it, uh, you know, come come to life. You know, it's, uh, I think the goal, like I said, everything – at our places, we want to be first class. We want to be the best at every single thing we do. So that is the goal, and that was the goal. And when when building this thing, you know, I've been to some really really nice stadiums at the Division Two level and seen them. But I think uh, if this isn't the best, it's going to be right up there. Yeah, I I'm with you. I'm with you in that regard. And uh, the images that have been posted and released by you guys, along with some others that I'm sure are, are floating around within that facility and and that campus over there. I'd imagine that's already become part of the recruiting pitch along with some of those uh, other pieces of the vision and kind of trajectory of this thing. Yeah. A little bit uh, with some of the, the later guys, right. Um, yep. You know, you, you, you kind of try not to get too far into it yet just because, you know, obviously at this stage, when we kind of found out about it, we were pretty much done with our high school recruiting, yeah. um, which would be the guys who would essentially uh, get to enjoy it the most. Yes. Um, you know, yes. some of these one-year guys may not, get to see the full thing complete yet, but it'll be cool for them when they come back to, uh, you know, see what, what they help build. I was going to ask, and that's kind of an interesting piece too, is because like a piece like this does not just show up uh, August, whatever, when you guys do start officially fall camp, whatever report date is for you guys. So, you know, when you're recruiting these, you start talking to these, like whether it's juniors in high school or, or whatever it is, mm -hmm. then you can, yeah, you can start to have these serious conversations of like, Hey, by the time you get a degree from West Florida and you graduate, this is going to be what's going on, man. Like this is, we're going to have this thing fully implemented, but uh, those conversations with the, like you said, those transfers, the grad guys that got maybe one, two years got to yeah. be a little bit different, but you touched yeah. on it. Is that, that's part of the conversation of like, Hey, come here to a program that's had success and just continue to build that. And then you're going to be able to come back in five years, 10 years, 15, and, and now really see the the fruits of your labor in a sense of, of what you've helped build. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that, you know, you want them to have pride in, in, in the university, right? And sometimes you lose that when, when recruiting transfers is, you know, they, they obviously have spent more time at the last school they've been at. So um, yeah. sometimes they don't always uh, identify themselves as a lifelong Argo or whatever program you're at, um, you know, but that's one of the things we want them to, to appreciate and, and um, invest in essentially. Right. Yeah. Um, and just, obviously be excited for the program as a whole, not just for the one year they're going to be here and so on and so forth. Those guys are going to be here for longer than a year. Then um, obviously they'll, they'll have some fruits of the labor, right? They'll, they'll be able to enjoy it at some capacity, maybe not the whole thing completely done, but. Uh, yeah, you, know, you are going to have some guys that come in, you know, for those those shorter stints. Giles this last year is a great example of a dude who's now pursuing a big time pro opportunity. How for guys in that case where, you know, um, there's a lot of players who are coming to you now where you've built this status of being a playoff contender, of being a team that's going to play against some really tough non-conference and in-conference opponents we'll talk about here in a second. But now you're going to have a lot of these guys kind of uh, attracted to you. How do you get them to, to buy into – obviously the football is going to sell itself, right? When you have a culture and you get people to buy into that, um, you either right. get with it or get out when you're at this level. Mm -hmm. But when you talk about feeling really invested in a community, in a campus, and kind of that family atmosphere – what do you do for those guys who are here on uh, on the short term as opposed to right. those long-term guys that you develop over three or four years? Uh, you know, I'll, I'll be honest with you. That's, sometimes that's difficult. It's been difficult in other places I've been. You know, it takes some time, you know. And uh, we, we do things a little unique here. You know, uh, one of the biggest things we really set forth on trying to do this year was signing our, our transfers mid-year, right? We, we signed a huge class uh, in December. And when I say huge, I mean we signed like 16 guys, which was – the most that had ever been done here yeah, before. In the relatively, past. right? Relatively. You see right. some crazy so, numbers out there. For sure. For sure. I mean, we, we did it at Davenport a few years ago. We signed 35 guys mid-year, which turned the whole program around, right? But we, we're, not, we're not here trying to change or rebuild the whole program. We just had a few spots that, that we had to um, 
you know, refuel that. And, you know, the biggest reason for that is for them to buy into the culture, for them to um, learn, learn the system, learn, learn the way we do things. And obviously just um, be here for as long as they can. You know, we, we recruit guys. We love being around guys that we enjoy um, being a part of the team and we want them around as long as we can. Um, you know, unfortunately, some guys uh, run out of eligibility and it is what it is. But, um, you know, we just welcome more to open arms. It's a family atmosphere across the board here um, and just try to show them as much love as possible, um, whether they're they're going to be the starting quarterback or they're going to be the fifth D tackle on, on, on the depth chart. Yep. It's all, you know, you, you just embrace those guys. Those are our guys. Those guys we picked. Those are the guys we hand selected. So. I like that. Mid-year is a big part of that, too. And I've seen uh, a lot of guys now that have been through the process, I've seen a lot of guys benefit from that. And I think, um, obviously, the sooner you can just get a guy on campus and have them working, one, in your facilities, but two, with their teammates and with the coaching staff and the strength staff and everything that comes with that, you're taking away that acclimation period, right? You know, a lot of that is is taking care of itself as opposed to just potentially showing up on a on report day one of, of camp, uh, trying to get guys up in the summer and, and doing a lot of those things. But the earlier you can get them on campus is the better uh but you and i both know that sometimes there's a struggle that comes with okay you want to get a guy up at mid-year you've got to get him place to obviously you want a travel agent but a place to live and maybe he's got to get a job he's got other people to uh, take care of and there's a lot that goes into that and i don't know if people really appreciate you got the nike hat on right now there's a lot of people that wear probably four five six seven eight of those uh trying to get these guys situated and on campus that's got to be a tough piece to navigate am i on the mark there yeah, no, absolutely. I think that's why a lot of people have a hard time getting uh, major guys in. You know, uh, D2, that's the beauty of small college football, man. There's just so you, – you have to wear so many hats. And you have to have guys on your staff that are willing to do that. Um, if you think you're just going to come out here and coach X's and O's, you are in the wrong business, right? It's um, – like you said, it's – you you got to be a travel agent. you got to be able to help these guys find flights. you got to help these guys find housing. you got to make sure that they're, uh, you know, getting with the academic advisors, getting – you know, and our school is not easy to get into. You know, I don't know if a lot of people realize that it is it is a very uh, rigorous um, institution to get into. Mm -hmm. So it takes a little time. So it, it, those are some of the challenges uh, in bringing mid-year guys. But you got to be you got to have a plan in place. And uh, I think that's one thing we we did a great job of doing this year. And we, uh, you know, I think we killed the mid-year signing class. We have a couple pieces that we, we have to fill um, right now in the summer, but nothing like it was last year. Like last year, we had to rehaul the whole roster. You know, this year it's not the same thing, so um, we're excited. Hell yeah.